Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to take a look at the energies and themes of the Taurus and Scorpio eclipse cycle that we are in until October 2023. This eclipse cycle began in November 2021 with a Taurus lunar eclipse at 27 degrees, and it will close out in October 2023 with another Taurus lunar eclipse at 5 degrees. And over the course of these two years, we have eclipses working in your life, in your energy, and in your astrology chart in the Taurus and Scorpio areas that are moving through significant shifts and evolutions. So we're going to look at some of these themes at both an intuitive and energetic level as well as some of the global themes and energies that we'll be experiencing with these eclipses. The last time the North Node was in Taurus and the South Node was in Scorpio was 2002 to 2005. Actually, that's when we had these last eclipses in these parts of our charts connected to the North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio which is a different energetic imprint than when we had the North Node in Scorpio and the South Node in Taurus in 2012 to 2014. So I wanted to call out these dates so that you could be aware of perhaps any changes or cycles that are connected to them that you're undergoing right now because these are the same energies working in your astrology chart that also underwent significant changes. So again, that was back 2002 to 2005 is when we had eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio, and then again, 2012 to 2014. And it can certainly take time to recall some of the life events, choices, changes you were moving through during those particular cycles, but it can also help you connect some dots around what is coming up for you to understand and reevaluate at this time. Eclipses bring in significant energy changes. They're meant to awaken us, liberate us. They bring in this sense of something even electrifying or a punch of energy that's designed to keep us moving forward forward. And this can feel even more intense when the eclipses are in the fixed signs because the fixed signs prefer to stabilize, be reliable, have things that are known. And here come these eclipses that break up energies. Anything that's been locked in, stuck, or stagnant deeply changes with eclipse energies because it is a power punch of change where the universe is saying, okay, let's move it forward. Let's move these energies forward. Let's evolve this. Let's shift this. And ready or not, here it goes. And even though this can be very destabilizing, unexpected, there can be big life changes that are difficult and hard with eclipses. This always depends on how the energy is working in your chart and how you are opening up to the willingness of it all, the willingness to change and to grow. But the universe is bringing in movement because The bigger picture is we only have so much time in these human bodies. We only have so much time on the planet. And if we are too slow for change or if we're stuck in certain patterns or habits or we're not moving energy forward, we start to feel that. We start to feel the heaviness of it because our souls know that we're here to continually evolve and grow and that there are things that can move us along and help us with that process ongoing experience for you. But these eclipses, I always feel them connected to the higher divine understanding of what your soul is meant to experience in this lifetime and that that isn't always in our consciousness. Our minds aren't always connected to that frequency. So when we are open to these jolts of change, we can see them as conscious evolution. 
We can work with them intentionally. We can understand that it's okay when we don't know what's happening in the moment, but this is where we go higher and trust that bigger soul evolutionary process and wisdom that is always working in our best and highest good. And that is something that you can continue to believe, to nourish, to trust in as we progress along these big changes, especially in this decade. So the eclipses in Taurus are connected to the North Node, and that North Node energy is about what we're learning and developing in the Taurus areas of our lives. So you can identify which house or houses you have Taurus energy in, and this is where new energies are coming in, new energies are coming through. You're meant to understand what you can do with this energy that supports your sense of this is me. Because Taurus is about our values, how we value ourselves, how we're reclaiming what is important to us and allowing that to strengthen us, to give us new confidence, to connect it as well to what it means to truly love and accept ourselves. This Taurus energy wants you to feel good about who you are, wants you to stabilize your internal energy system. Now, this can be tricky at times because during this eclipse cycle, we have Uranus in Taurus, which is continuing to shake things up. And yet that Uranus energy moves forward, meaning it moves from zero to 29 degrees of Taurus, whereas the eclipses move in reverse, where they move from the last degree of an astrology sign to the beginning zero point. And these north node, south node transits are really fascinating because they essentially reset the energy in your chart. So we're moving through a reset of Taurus energies as that north node moves from 29 to zero degrees of Taurus while Uranus and Taurus is moving in the opposite way. So you could see it as like two trains moving in different directions and they're going to have a big energetic point coming up in July and August 2022 when the North Node and Uranus are conjunct in Taurus. And this is big life changes, significant trajectory shifts. This is where there can be big timeline changes. I'm seeing this as some type of energetic culmination of what you're really awakening to that's connected to the higher energies of Taurus. And I'm feeling this as well as definitely connected to the lower expressions of Scorpio energies. But the visual I'm getting is that we are spiraling up to what it means to truly own all of our energies in these physical bodies, how we show up with a purity, almost an innocence around the fact that you are naturally connected to abundance in all forms. Yet we've had lifetimes where we've had to move through poverty consciousness, scarcity consciousness, lack. We've had fears come up around what we can make or earn, around whether or not we're good enough, we're valuable enough, whether or not we can create a life that is truly meaningful, that's truly connected to what you want to experience on this planet. And I feel like what we're moving through is this return to stabilizing our energy fields after multiple lifetimes of experiencing some very intense dark energies that are the lower expressions of Scorpio. So essentially, we're returning to a very solid, true place of knowing that your soul's frequency has never forgotten your worth. Your soul's frequency has always been connected to abundance and the unlimited energy streams on the planet, but also connected to how you're here to beautifully create what is true for you in a way that maybe has felt like you had to surrender it, you had to give it up, you had to dilute it or 
accommodate others. And again, I'm seeing this as a timeline across multiple lifetimes where we have this programming around what we believe we can manifest or create, what we believe we can experience. We also have programming on the planet here around wealth. And I don't simply mean the economics or financial energy of wealth, which is certainly included, but this is about the wealthiness of our energy, the wealth of energy we can work with and integrate and connect with, and how there has been a lot of programming on this planet across multiple centuries that wealth was only for the elite, the few, it was limited. It was a limited resource. And again, I don't just mean this in terms of money, but in terms of what you can create in your life because you have access to it. You have the ability to connect to it. You have the resources for it. So this is about the wealth of experiences that are possible on the planet that don't have to be limited to certain groups of people or to a certain socioeconomic status. This is about opening up to the wealth of energies that support you here and how you're tapping into that for yourself, how you're claiming it and how you're integrating it. Now, this is like a very interesting dance where we bring in an energy, but we have to have room in ourselves, in our belief systems, in our energetic form for other energies to fall away and be completed because they don't have that same consciousness around them. Meaning, if you've been carrying any form of scarcity consciousness or lack consciousness or poverty consciousness around yourself, those belief systems have to unwind and unravel. Those belief systems have to essentially loosen up and begin to fall away so that you can call in and have room for the higher consciousness energies that are about your worthiness and that you're a beautiful, powerful creator on the planet even though we've had lifetimes that have taken away those energies or we've disconnected from them. And this could also be something that we chose at a soul level because so much of being on this planet is about having multiple experiences, multiple lifetimes where we're different energies, we're different forms, we play different roles. You know, we show up in different types of bodies. We incarnate in different cultures, different belief systems. We have this full spectrum of energy to play with here on this playground. And various lifetimes can leave a much bigger imprint around what we've been through. So if you've had multiple lifetimes that have taken you away from your your ability to see yourself as an abundant creator, then there's more work to do around unraveling that and no longer claiming that truth because you're done with those lessons. You're complete with those lessons. You're like, yeah, I played that whole scarcity consciousness game way out. I'm kind of exhausted from it. Now I'm intentionally shifting my energy to step into the strength of what it means to connect with abundance, manifestation, my own creation power, my ability to enjoy harmony on the planet, my ability to feel strong and clear and confident in my energy, knowing that I'm more than enough. I am more than enough and that is what I'm owning and stepping into more fully. And now this is what I require that the universe reflects back to me. This is now the energetic connection points that I'm feeling and owning in myself. And therefore, it's creating new experiences in my world that reflect this new belief back to me. So the North Node in Taurus is gathering, bringing in accumulating, looking at how to invest in yourself, invest in your own energy, and then stabilize it. Really make it solid and clear so that it's something that your understanding is a part of who you are, even if it felt very far away and distant. Even if this energy felt like you couldn't really see it or touch it because it was so far away from your energy that you just didn't even believe it was true for you anymore. And this eclipse cycle wants to bring in energies that are true for you based on what you're consciously choosing to create and connect with. 
And if you're wanting to open up to this energy even more, simply ask for reminders of lifetimes where you experienced abundance because we have those lifetimes. We have lifetimes where we experienced amazing abundance and prosperity, where there was more than enough in your life, in your family's world, in your experience for what you needed. There were lifetimes where you felt serenity and your energies were calmer. There wasn't a lot that was perhaps destructive or there also were times when There wasn't war on the planet. There wasn't this energy of turmoil and angst. And it could feel like you're traveling way back into other timelines to find that peace. But I'm seeing it as this beautiful time period of vibrant, bright colors where the natural world was honored and cherished and very alive. And we were very much connected to the cycles of the earth and seeing them as these beautiful partnership energies where we were working with the earth in a very nourishing manner and as such the earth was nourishing us. So this feels like a time period when we were really aware of the seasons of honoring agriculture, honoring what the earth could create, including everything from food sources to herbs, to flowers, to the wisdom of the trees, the wisdom of the mountains. It was like there was this honoring of the earth. And I feel like that's part of what is rising up within us, almost like these very deep seated memories of what it meant to be on the planet in harmony with the natural world and a sense of synergy with the environments around us. And that is certainly what we can recreate. And that can certainly look like your own version of heaven on earth. What does that mean to you? What does it mean for you to experience being here on the planet in a way that calms your nervous system, that brings in a sense of peace and harmony, where you can feel like it's okay to Go slow at times. Literally stop and smell the roses. Trust a growth process. Honor what is around you from the viewpoint of spirit where you can see how lucky we are on this planet to have so much bounty, to have so many colors, to have so many things come alive that are also breathing the same air that we're breathing and enjoy all the ways that we have more than enough to create a prosperous life for ourselves. And although this can sound idyllic, and of course, trust what resonates with you, because it could be that you don't feel this connection, meaning maybe there's things about this that you don't feel are true for you. But I feel that for so many of you who are light workers and star seeds and healers, and you've been on this planet so many times, there's parts of your own cellular memory that understand and know the beautiful essence of the earth, as well as why you came here to experience it, as well as your connection to it. So this is the energy that's rising up in us. This is what we are reconnecting with that we've been disconnected from. And we're each doing this in our own way and in our own timelines. We're doing it with our own energetic creation power, and we're doing it in a way that is also new for our souls. So this is a new consciousness on the planet. This is a new cycle of growth. This is an energy that is both familiar and foreign, where it can feel very new and then also very much like, wait, I recognize parts of this. Something about this feels like I'm aware of what's happening within me, even if consciously I can't recall the exact details. There's something opening up here where we're returning to what it means to feel worthy of being our own energy vessels, where we're understanding I'm here to be exactly what is correct for me because it's needed, it's cherished, it's loved by spirit. And I don't have to give that away to anybody. I don't have to dissipate it or compromise it. It's about not compromising any part of your self-love. And when we say that we don't want to compromise any part of our self-love, there's a lot that is important to really ground in about that because we can hear these phrases tossed around and it sounds really good and really, okay, great, I got it. But then you need to pull it into your energy and really define what that means for you. And I'm seeing it as a process. What is your process for defining that 
there are energies in your life that are loving, are accepting, are recognizing your energy, what you're about, because that's what you're doing. You're doing that for yourself, right? You're understanding this is what I need, this is what I want, this is what feels correct for me because it's connected to who I am, what I want, what I need, what I value, what matters to me in life. But then we need this process to clearly discern and decide what that continues to look like. And in the Taurus energies, that would be taking time, stepping back, going within, getting quiet, listening, to what you're sensing around another energy. And so you can certainly relate this to people, people in your world, people in your life, whether those are friendships, siblings, spouses, business partnerships, whatever it might be in your world. It's really getting clear within yourself first before deciding before giving a response or giving an answer, because this is a new practice. This is something that we are now practicing with the North Node in Taurus to understand what is this for me? So if you're feeling like you're on the spot to give someone a response or an answer, or you're feeling like something's coming up, it's very urgent or immediate, it's right in front of you, but you don't have clarity, It's important to develop a process where you're able to go into your own energy, go into, is this correct for me? Is this right for me? Does this resonate? Is this a part of what I want to direct my energy to in this lifetime or at this time in my life? Is this something that I want to take on, that I want to contribute to, that I want to be a part of? And it's this time that's important where you look at, perhaps in your world, how you have felt pressured or like there were other people's energies infiltrating or there was this persuasion or manipulation or something that somebody was trying to sell to you in order for your energy to be a part of it. Now, this doesn't mean it's nefarious or that it's something negative because, of course, there's things that we do want to engage with other people about. We do want to participate. We do want to share the experiences. But this is about coming back into your energy first for clarity before the external response, reply, or answer is given. And this is going to be a process that will help solidify you, that will help you feel stable and strong in what you need and what you want. So again, it's looking at what is your process? What does that look like for you? When there's so much happening in our lives and in our worlds, there's so many choices, so many directions, and it's going within. It's taking the best of the Taurus energy to go into your own energy to find that peace within to connect to where your energy may be rising, where it feels correct for you, where you hear a yes or you feel it. Perhaps it's even in your body consciousness, but it's essentially trusting your own energy for answers and information because we can be in these unconscious loops of being people pleasers, of looking at what others want from us, of being in these exchanges that aren't truly healthy or they no longer feel healthy. They're no longer resonating with what you're about, what you want, what matters to you. And so that's why I feel it's very important here to practice pausing, practice giving yourself time and space, looking at where in your life you've always felt you needed to do something for another, where you needed to perhaps show up or perform a certain way or do something because at a deeper level, level of your unconscious self, you thought this was about being valued or you thought there was something here that would demonstrate your lovability or that you felt that they were loving and accepting you in some manner. And that can certainly be true. There can certainly be healthy parts of this in our lives that don't go away even during this eclipse cycle. So it's certainly not to say that everything 
in our interactions needs to change or shift. But what we're doing is bringing in higher consciousness to ourselves, bringing it in to our everyday life and really getting into that strong energy of checking in with yourself first. Because the lower Scorpio energies can show us what we think we have to do because somehow it demonstrates our worthiness or what we think we have to provide or the energy exchange that we think we have to participate in because then it means if I do this, then they'll do that. So we're also looking at some of these lower definitions of unhealthy interactions that we have perpetuated or enabled simply because it's what we've always done or it's our programming or it's what we thought we had to do to be loved, to be valued, to be acknowledged, to be seen. And we are consciously deconditioning from that and we're stepping into something that is truer. It's truer for you and only you can define that. Only you can define that for yourself. And so this is where the growth happens, where there could be things that you're doing for the first time in your life, no matter what your age is, no matter where you are in your journey, but you're understanding, no, I have to really get clear on this for me before my energy interacts outside of itself, before my energy goes into another person, another project, another whatever, I have to really understand if it's correct for me. And then what will also happen in here, and I'm feeling this energetically, is that as soon as you connect with your answer, whether that is a yes or a no, the it feels clear. Like I'm feeling this clarity in the throat chakra as well, where whatever you need to say or express, because it is coming from your own clarity, confidence, and power, there's a way to communicate whatever you need to share that can be peaceful, harmonious, honest, pure, true, you know, all these beautiful things because it's coming from that authentic place within you because you went there for the answer. So you went there for clarity to understand what is correct for you. Then the ability to communicate that and to share that can come from a very truthful place. And that is one of the higher expressions of Scorpio energy. So as the South Node sweeps through Scorpio, sweeps out, removes, purges, releases the lower expressions of ourselves that we weren't always seeing clearly or that were too wrapped up in other things, we're sweeping away that energy to get to a new truth, to get to something that is deeper within you that's also connected to your power. And that's how I feel this beautiful axis of energy between the Taurus North Node and the Scorpio South Node is that they are connected to a deeper part of your power that you perhaps weren't feeling, sensing, or fully claiming for whatever reasons. And again, it feels like there's been a lot of layers of energies that we've just held that has suppressed parts of ourself or that we just weren't aware of. You know, we didn't know this was a part of you that was looking for more life. We're looking for more expression, wanting to rise up out of the cave and be seen. And in fact, when I'm getting a visual of that North Node, South Node, node line, I'm seeing it as an elevator shaft, as that energy of the north node is asking us to look at what we're truly wanting and needing, and then to get into more of the energy, that elevator shaft goes down into the depths of the earth, which is where the Scorpio energy resides, and we go into the deeper parts of our hearts, because it looks like there's energies in the heart that were, it's, it's like contaminated or it's infiltrated or it just was the energy that the heart has been holding because again, it was this older definition of love, of acceptance. Um, there could have been some other things involved here that the heart is holding fear, damage, trauma, abuse, um, that the heart has absorbed energies from others. Of course, this can also be from within, from yourself, but it looks like it's the energy that was either taught or experienced at younger parts of our 
journeys or even just when the soul was younger, you know, when the soul was more innocent and naive and really wanted to connect or really wanted to understand more. There's something about this energy that feels like whatever was the initial intention, it could have been twisted, it could have been manipulated. I'm also feeling infiltration where there was something about the heart's desires that weren't truly respected, understood, acknowledged, or even truly heard. And I'm actually getting the image now that I hope I can describe of a child who has a very clear energy field, very open, very open to the world, very excited, willing, that innocent, naive energy of I'm here, I'm excited to be here. And then the energies start to come in. And I'm actually seeing this through the parental structure. And it feels very much like family influences. And it feels like those in the immediate environment whose energies were of a lower consciousness. And this can certainly be a very powerful soul contract where we come into this lifetime with soul contracts with family members who trigger us to grow. But in order to grow, there was something about this energy where you had to experience a lot of something first. It's like getting a huge dose of this or a double serving of that. And maybe it isn't even this lifetime. And maybe this doesn't resonate with you at all, but I'm just feeling this as kind of this very interesting soul story around how there's this huge willingness to connect, to share, to understand, to want to be with others. And the energy that came in was heavier, denser, again, of a lower vibration, a lower consciousness, because it was that pure soul who was the ultimate catalyst and healer of the family line, of the family lineage. And it feels like there's something here where that soul had to take on a lot in order to transmute, transform, get into it, understand it, and also go into that deep emotional experience that can certainly bring you to your knees. And it feels like this energy, especially if this happened in other lifetimes or other timelines, it's rising to the surface now. It's understanding what we took on because we thought that was love. We thought that was acceptance. We thought, oh, this is what I do in order to have this type of exchange with someone because the Scorpio energy is about going into the heart of feelings where there is vulnerability, there is intimacy, there is opening up, there is merging. This is the energy of sharing sexually, physically, psychologically. This is where a lot of joint healing can happen. This is where the energies and their healthier expressions can really understand what's going on within. And this is where we also can understand ourselves better by interacting with others in a healthy way. But that isn't what it feels like at first. That isn't how it shows up at first, but it feels like that is what we're transforming energetically, spiritually, intuitively. That's what we're working on also emotionally and sexually, as well as psychologically. All these areas of ourselves where we have merged with others, it hasn't fully been healthy. It hasn't been best for our heart, best for our emotions, best for our needs, but we also didn't know what those answers were or what those solutions were because we had to go through certain experiences in order to have the contrast. And I'm feeling that word really strongly right now that there could be some things you're awakening to and seeing a very strong contrast between different parts of your life, different parts of your experiences, different parts of your energy. And now they're showing it to me as different parts of the heart. And Scorpio energy is extreme. So it could be something that you were all in. You were all about this. You were really in that place of an intensity, something that took you full into an experience, full into a chapter in your life or a relationship or certain relationship habits or patterns or ways that you interacted with others that felt powerful, that felt like there was something for you that was either powerfully intense and involved Perhaps it was showing you more of even how to be connected and interact with people, whether those were healthy or unhealthy exchanges. 
And it's also, again, what we thought we had to do to be loved or what we thought love was. And that's what's deeply changing here within our psyche. That is what is shifting. And that is something that you could be sensing and feeling not only within yourself, but in your relationships with others. There could be something here that just no longer feels good and no longer resonates. Maybe there's things you're seeing that you participated in and you're raising the bar for yourself. You're requiring more from yourself. You're like, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore or I wouldn't want to make someone feel like that. So this is part of our rising consciousness where we see how we show up. And by show up, I mean even the words you say, the energy you put out, the choices you make, your behavior, your actions that are no longer supporting how you want to be in the world, how you want to participate or interact, and that there's something here that it feels very personal. And again, I'm feeling this line of energy goes through many lifetimes around what we were taught was necessary in order to be loved. And we're looking at it in a very deep way and having the courage to challenge it having the courage to understand this is no longer what I want. This is no longer true for me. And one of the gifts of Scorpio is being able to have these like open, vulnerable conversations with people to share how you really feel. And in fact, a friend of mine was just over to my house yesterday and she was telling me about this interaction she had with another friend of hers and she was so uncomfortable. In fact, they'd been friends for years, their kids are friends, their husbands are friends, but their dynamic was really off. And my friend was telling me how much it was hurting her, how much it didn't feel good, how much it was bringing up in her and she was questioning herself as a friend. She's like, am I such a horrible friend that this woman had to sit down and go off on me the restaurant? You know, are other people thinking this way about me? Are other people not happy with me as a friend? And we were talking this through and we were going over, well, what does it mean to be a friend? What does it mean to really accept someone and to feel safe with them? And what does it mean to navigate some of these tricky dialogues and tricky situations, but with full awareness of how you're coming across and how the other person's receiving the energy. Because she felt like when she met up with this friend, it's like she totally had an agenda. She was ready to go off on me. And my friend was just sitting there feeling like she was taking bullets, crying in the restaurant because she's like, I had no idea she felt this way and that I was so triggering for her. And it basically made my friend feel horrible. And at the end of the meal in the restaurant, the other gal was like, well, this was a good conversation. Should we hug? And my friend's like, I don't feel comfortable hugging at all right now. I'm really hurting. Like, I didn't know this was everything you were going through. And I don't feel good about our friendship right now. And I was thinking about how this is exactly what we're looking at in our lives. We're looking at how we share our energies with others, how they share their energies with us. Does it feel good? Is it healthy? Do you feel accepted? Do you feel safe? These are some very primary baseline questions to assess because it's going to give you an answer. And so this was a situation that was very much about those lower Scorpio energies and what was hidden, what was suppressed, what was not kind, and what was bringing up some bigger things to evaluate, especially when that emotional turmoil comes up. And it can take time to move through that. It can take time to get into what you're really feeling about it, you know, getting to the truth. So my friend was basically talking this out with me and we were getting into the truth of what friendship is. What is real friendship for you? And and is this it? Because It's okay to get to your own answer, even when that is uncomfortable, even when there are other people involved and other relationships involved, and it can all feel quite messy. And as we were talking it through, you know, the thought that came to my mind was about her responsibility to herself, her responsibility to accepting herself, and that especially in friendships, we need people who accept us for who we really are. Yes, we all have bad days. And we're going through our own lessons and experiences and we have things that change and shift and sometimes 
life circumstances take us away from certain friendships, but the true friendships remain. The true friendships are the ones you can come back to and reconnect and catch up. Uh, But this gal was so mad at my friend that it really turned into this very unpleasant, unhealthy exchange that revealed what was repressed and unspoken, but also this manipulative power dynamic that was happening that my friend had no idea about. And my friend has moon in Taurus and she's very clear and very simple. And she's like, I had no idea all this was going on. I wasn't feeling this way. I didn't see it that way. And so they were very much on different sides of whatever was transpiring. But what it came down to was that her truth was revealing to her that this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel like friendship. This doesn't even feel like good communication. And, you know, sometimes those answers can be difficult to arrive at because with friendships especially, you could think that they're meant to last or they're going to keep growing with you. But if the energy isn't pure on both sides or if there's enough things that are not matching up, you're going to see that. You're going to feel that. And that is certainly something that we're working on and we're going into the heart of what it means to love ourselves, accept ourselves amongst this emotional turmoil at times and to come into our own energy and listen. Listen to our answers. Listen to our own truth because we could even have the programming around the shoulds, right? Oh, I should maintain this friendship because her husband and my husband are friends or I should maintain this friendship because our kids get along and it can bring up all these shoulds and yet The truth of it is, it makes you really uncomfortable. So then there can be ways to establish new boundaries to understand what you need to be clear about in your communications and your interactions. And these are the lessons and energies we're going to be working with because that North Node in Taurus wants us to show up with the strength of who we really are. And as these eclipses unfold, as these eclipses come out and bring in these little pow, pow, pows in our lives and in our charts, what they're opening you up to are more of those loving frequencies within you that you can integrate, practice, solidify, that you can look at what is happening in your life and assess what is correct and true for you now. But it's through those Taurus themes of what is stabilizing for my energy, what is essential and true for me, and also to be very honest with yourself around what you're giving away to others, what you're offering or how you're investing in relationships or experiences outside of yourself that are no longer honoring your needs, your self-love, your heart, whatever it might be for you. Eclipses bring in change. They're very dynamic. They're very electrifying. And the energies play out for a minimum of six months. Sometimes the energies are much longer. They can play out for years and they bring in some very big cycles of growth and change. There's also an acceleration of energy with eclipses. And I also see it as an elevation where we have the potential to go higher within our own frequencies, within our own vibrations, to go up into some new places that we're meant to experience and play around with. This brings up the new lessons, the new areas of growth, the new levels of expansion, as well as the big removals, the big changes, the shocks, perhaps, the awakenings, the liberation, and revealing to you more of what's possible with your own energy that maybe you didn't see and you just weren't aware of previously. Now, I'm feeling like I have more to share about this because I feel like there's a lot more coming up, especially around some bigger global themes of what we're going to be moving through during this particular eclipse cycle. So in part two of this topic, I'll talk more about the global themes, more about the shifts and changes that we're going to be moving through, especially as they relate to finances and economics, which is an area that both Taurus and Scorpio rule. So I will do that next Monday. We will pick up on this topic and continue it forward. But I hope this provides an insight into what you are working on in this particular eclipse chapter of our lives and where the growth is possible, as well as, again, getting into a process for yourself that honors your self-love. What does that look like in the world? How do you take time to get to that information or that answer for yourself without 
going into what other people expect of you, what other people want from you, what you've always done, your own unhealthy habits, your own karmic loops. All of that is a part of this cycle, but ultimately it's returning you to that energy within you that your soul has always held, that your soul is always connected to around that higher frequency of loving and accepting yourself and then making sure that energy is in your aura and also goes out into every area of your life. And when we do that, that's when the change happens. That's when things no longer fit. That's when relationships are no longer of interest or friendships change. That's when things with your family members go to a different place or a new place. And keep in mind, these can be beneficial developments. These can be healthy developments too, where you then start to connect or reconnect with people who get it, who see you, who accept you. And this is where beautiful new manifestations can come from as well. But one of the main keys here, as I mentioned, is to understand what that is for you and to take that energy within yourself, sit with it, listen to it, understand it, and then make your powerful choices from that point. So as I mentioned, we will continue this topic next Monday. So I hope you will join me then as I offer this podcast to you every Monday and Wednesday, as well as new videos for you on YouTube every Friday. Eclipses are part of the transiting energies that we move through. And for those of you who want to learn more about transits through your astrology chart, please check out my class that takes you from beginner to intermediate information about learning transits in your chart. And we go through six different webinars discussing the transiting energies in your chart, help you look at them, understand them, because the transiting planets will reveal what is coming up in your life, what is a focus, where you're healing, where you're shifting, where you're changing, so much is covered. So please check that out and you can get 50% off with coupon code transits. So I'll put the link below this podcast, but that's just something that you can use to further develop your astrological knowledge. And more importantly, look at what's happening in your chart. Understand the themes and energies coming up in your life, connect some big dots, as well as get a heads up, a heads up on what is coming in your life and how to work with it consciously. So please check that out. You can also find my other astrology programs over at mollymccord.online as well as some business development videos and courses. Thank you so much for joining me as always. I will see you back here very soon for our next podcast topic. And please be sure to connect with me on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Take good care and I'll see you back here very soon.